Welcome back to the Tool Crib and the continuation of the build for my Leatherman Super Surge. In the last video, we were able to get this implement uh, sanded down to a point where I was happy with it. Originally, I thought I went too far with it, but in the end, I think it's going to work out pretty well. One other thing that I want to add to this implement, though, and that is a smaller diameter wire stripper. But in order to do that, I first need to get all the implements back in place, get everything back in the tool so that I can mark it correctly exactly where it needs to go so that it'll function uh, in the way that I want it to. So in order to do that, we first have to take this implement and get it sanded down. And I'm going to spare you guys all the sanding process for this one. So I'm going to be bringing this one down from 0 0.0915 inches down to the target measurement of 0 0.0745. That will allow us to get all the implements back in place as well as the spacer washers that I intend to use uh, in between them. So let me get started on getting this one sand down. And when we come back, we'll put everything back in the tool. Well, I've just spent the last six hours trying to get this thing together. And I got this profile down where I wanted it. Actually, I had to go beyond what that original 0.0745 uh, inches. I had to take it down another hundredth uh, because things just weren't fitting together the way I want them to. Now, I've had to take this thing apart and put it back together probably about seven or eight different times now already because the problem I was running into was this particular implement. Whenever it was in the closed position, everything was working just fine. Uh, the right tension, the right amount of, of pressure. But when I went to open it up, it was, I guess, maybe I've got it ground incorrectly and it's still a little stiff getting it into the fully open position. So I think I'm going to have to go back in and rework this one a little bit in order to get it right. You can see it's it's a little tough and then once it gets to about the halfway point, it's fine. So I guess maybe I don't have that ground quite flat and I'm going to have to go back in there and redo it. I tried a number of different ways to put the washers in here in order to kind of isolate that or, or alleviate that problem. I ended up having to put uh, my first washer in between the combination tool and the small screwdriver and the second washer in between the uh, the chisel and the awl on the end. And I finally got the tension worked out right enough that, that everything is operational, but I'm definitely going to have some fine tuning left to do on it. Now on this chisel, what I wanted to do was add in another... You can see how that it's for some reason it's just stiff right there and i think maybe i just don't have it ground completely flat i'm just gonna have to get back into it so on the chisel what i wanted to do was i want to add in a separate little uh a small wire stripper and i was going to go ahead and mark it but the I, I i ordered a special diamond file to to make that and it hasn't shown up yet. So I think I'm going to skip around and do the next thing that I was going to do, which is I have taken the uh, the phosphor bronze washers or phosphorus bronze washers from my uh, my donor Leatherman Surge, uh, first generation Leatherman Surge. And I think I'm going to add those in on the knife blades to make the knife blades a little bit smoother operating. I actually have four so I might go ahead and just do all the implements on the outside so that they the action on them is just a little bit smoother and we'll see if it makes any big difference. I mean this one is, is fairly loose uh, so it operates pretty well but it could always be better right so l let's take this apart and we'll add in these washers now and try to get those knife blades operating just a little bit smoother. Well I took the knife blade or, or took the barrel out and, and removed the screw and, and tried putting the second phosphorus bronze washer on the outside. But honestly, I didn't see any discernible difference. I couldn't tell that it was operating any smoother. In fact, I think it works better just the way it is. Uh, the barrel for this, uh, this, the screw and the barrel combination, the barrel doesn't quite go all the way through the knife blade anyway. And so it's the wrong diameter. This is the diameter of the barrel and not the the screw so the barrel would actually have to have to stick full, stick out of the knife blade just a little bit and as it is it sits a little bit below it so it really doesn't do me any good honestly i don't see the benefit of putting the phosphorus bronze washer in this particular style 
Now, if it was more like in the charge series where the two were connected, uh, then yeah, I would probably say that it's going to make a, a big difference. But in this style, uh, it's just working fine. As a matter of fact, uh, it, it actually operating a little bit smoother without that extra washer in there as opposed to putting it in there. Seems counterintuitive, but that's the way it is. So let's uh, move on to the next thing. Now that I've got this chisel back on the multi-tool, and we've already done the, the uh, cable stripper in a previous video, and that ended up working really, really well. But now that I got this on here, I kind of want to see how much control it offers you to use the chisel and just kind of how well it works. It's actually not bad. I kind of like you get... With the extra length of being on the tool, now you get some, some control over that. I mean, it was sharp to begin with, but it came out not too bad. Now, how long that edge is going to hold is kind of debatable, but you can see it. I mean, you want to make some feathering sticks, I guess you can do it with that. You don't necessarily have to use your knife blade. So, for what I'm wanting this for as a, as a scraper is more so more or less what I was trying to get not necessarily a chisel it just kind of works as both it seems to work pretty well so the next thing that I was thinking about doing to modify this surge was to do some work on the wire cutters specifically the soft wire cutters I have these are the original 154 cm that came with this multi-tool because this one's a, a little older model and these are the ones that we replaced in a video. These are the premium wire cutters, which come down to a little bit finer point. The problem is, is they're still not great wire cutters. But the EOD version are exceptionally good wire cutters. Now, Leatherman does something a little... I don't know. So, what they do is they have a curve on the front side of the regular wire cutters. And it's more squared off on the EOD version. And then on the back side, they square it off down here on the regular. And they notch it on the EOD version. So that you cannot, without reworking them, swap one over for the other. Which is kind of crazy in my opinion. I don't know why they would do that. Some people may want just regular good solid wire cutters as opposed to having hard wire cutters. Some uh, someone not necessarily in the EOD would want to take uh, these cutters and put them into the EOD. I don't know why they would want to do that, but what I'm thinking about doing is using the EOD cutters. So what I'll have to do in order to make them fit into the surge is come just radius this edge just enough so that it will bypass and seat into the surge plier. By doing that, that way I don't have to sharpen the edge. I thought about trying to sharpen this edge uh, to make it a little bit better wire cutter but the problem is is because it's so small it's so hard to get to where if I do it with the EOD version I can radius the edge pretty easily by setting it in the vise and then I can come in here with a file uh, and create my own notch for the hard wire cutters because that can't be uh, that doesn't you don't want that as a sharp edge you're gonna want that as kind of a blunt edge and by grinding or filing the notch in there, that'll both bring it back a little bit to create the notch and file that flat, which is what you want. So I think I'm going to order another set because these came out of my uh, Leatherman Mutt EOD. I think I'm going to order a set of these and we're going to try it with the EOD version. We'll grind the radius out here and then we'll create our own cutting notch. Now the difference is up front here is you see that because these are angled back for the surge it gives you a little bit more area for your pliers for grabbing hold of stuff. So I'll lose a little bit there, but I'll gain longer wire cutters. So it kind of depends on what you're doing with your multi-tool. If you're doing more electrical oriented stuff, it might be worth your time to take a set of EOD cutters and try to modify them in order to fit into whatever multi-tool you have, whether that be a wave, charge, surge, you know, Super Tool 300, rebar, it doesn't matter. You can make them fit. You just have to do a little bit of Dremel work. So I'm going to order some, and I think that's one of the next things that we're going to do to this. We're going to we're going to get this one, and then we're going to get that package opener. I misplaced it right now. Oh, here it is. Uh, I've kind of set it uh, or made a mark here to how I want to try to cut that out. 
I think that's what we're going to try to do. I mean, I've, I've thought about using an old saw blade and just cutting my own, but the problem is those old saw blades are not near, not quite as thick as this, so I think my best bet is just to take this one that came out of the rev and modify it to fit into the T-shank adapter so that uh, I'll be able to have a wire, or excuse me, a package opener on the surge. So in the next video, that's what we're going to be working on. We're going to be working on this one, and we're going to try to integrate some EOD cutters into the Leatherman surge. Well, my name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib and my build of my Leatherman Super Surge. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.